Hi. <laughs> I see you. You're the only person, you and I are the only people with video. I, don't I put know. lipstick on. <laughs> hey, All right. Good deal. Okay. Woohoo. I love it. Well, anybody, okay. Anybody got anything you want to talk about since we've got a pretty good group here already? Janet, you got anything on your mind? Me? Yeah. No, I just put on lipstick to be in this <laughs> video chat. Waiting to hear what everybody has to say. I wish everybody would do a video. I think it would be fun. Anyway. Yeah, everybody put on your best clothes and join the video. All right. So, okay. If you have a panic attack, you know that if you can escape, you'll feel better. But analyze it a little bit. Why is escape going to help? Because something where you are is triggering you. On the plane, you want to take the things on the plane that could trigger you one by one and neutralize them so they can't trigger you. Thinking each element of the panic attack to face, voice, and touch of a calming person and to oxytocin production. So then if you go back to the idea of why do you need to escape and panic is to get away from something that's triggering you. What we want to set it up so is nothing on the plane is going to trigger you. And, and, and we've not only linked the, the things of panic attack to calming influences, but we've linked sitting in the seat. We've linked the flight attendants. We've linked the noises the plane makes. We've linked turbulence. So everything that could trigger a panic attack on the plane, you've already preconditioned it. So you don't need to escape it. What we're trying to do is have an anxiety-free exercise. We figure the routine things that happen on the flight, like walking on the plane and sitting down in the seat, door closing, taxi out, take off, they have some potential to bother you, but in order to keep them from doing something significant to you, we say, just make those images small and black and white rather than life size. Everything in phase two is going to be troublesome. So that's why we use the cartoons. Now, if you're going through phase one and something bothers you in phase one, go ahead and make it a cartoon. So I want to throw out another category of a person that could be helpful for strengthening exercise mm -hmm. based on something that happened to me. I was at a physical therapist last week and for something else. And I noticed how she was looking at me uh -huh. as I was describing some of the problems I was having. She had this amazing intent look of like compassion like gazing at me, like really listening. So no matter what I said, it was some weird stuff too. <laughs> she was yeah. just gazing at me with this super non-judgmental, like comforting list. And I think I mentioned before, once I had a nurse do that too. And I'm thinking, even though it's not a good friend, um, this could be very helpful because that gaze was just like, amazing to me how how mu how much it calmed me down in the mm -hmm. office you know mm -hmm. it, so yeah yeah, that, yeah I, I completely agree because what i used to tell people to do is look for someone who's like you just described someone who's empathically attuned and then sometimes people will say yeah well i i don't can't think of anybody like that but basically it needs to be someone who's giving you signals that you don't have anything to fear but when you're talking about a person like your physical therapist with that kind of focus, that's really, as you know, remarkably calming. And it reaches into you in a way that you feel like you're really known by this other person. I have her voice. Uh -huh. I sort of have the memory of because she's a physical therapist and she, you know. But what was interesting is I don't think... I would have noticed this if I hadn't taken the course, you know, like it, now that I've taken the course, I'm much more conscious of people in my life that are going to provide that to me so that I can use them for the strengthening exercise. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, the thing is we, we look at other people and, and we don't have our antenna up until you hear, Hey, it's possible that the person you're with is unconsciously sending you signals that are having an effect on you. And I think, I know I used to kind of try to pretend that nobody had an effect on me because I didn't like the effect. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, 
now you can say, well, look, if you don't like the effect somebody is having, maybe you should be with somebody else. Yeah, or find a new physical therapist. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but it was, so that category of like a medical professional you know, has that, what you call that empathetic attunement or whatever, yeah. is a type of person that I'm going to continue to look for um, yeah. for my strengthening. Yeah. Yeah, you got a, you really got a, a, somebody who's perfect for that. But I would say that it, it, sometimes if you, if you don't have that kind of thing that you now have, it's okay to use a person who is just sending you signals that you're safe, not exceptional stuff, just that this person you're with is sending you signals that there's nothing physically that you need to be concerned about and that they're sort of easygoing and don't do judging and criticism. Yeah. That's enough to to give you a pretty good amount of calming. Um, do you know that feeling of having your guard let down that sometimes just happens involuntarily? That would be probably the the best person to do it exercise with. If you can actually remember a person you had that experience with, um, I don't know if you had that with a physical therapist or not. You probably it was, did. If it, it was just different, well. I could let my guard down because I was describing all this stuff and she was still listening to me without judgment. I mean, yeah. you know, I was, but, but I agree like a friend that you can let your guard down with and laugh with and totally be yourself is probably the most powerful. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, anyway, it's great to have someone in your life that has this effect on you because you can use it. You can apply it to any number of challenges right sometimes kid around that it's like a big jar of peanut butter and you can spread it on hundreds of crackers <laughs> anything that's a challenge you yeah. don't have you don't have to have a whole menagerie of of friends who are uh, great to be with just need just one person mm -hmm. yep